Alright boys, here we are on the second week of this series on everything soldier. Now this week I want to touch on the more advanced aspect of jumping which has been covered in every single possible beginner video on the face of this earth. Now what most people don't cover though is how to use jumping to your advantage and actually make an impact on your team. Now that matchmaking is right around the corner, I think this is going to be really useful. So as usual, this video is going to assume that you know the basics of jumping and strafing. If you don't, simply going into jump servers that have beginner maps like, you know, jump for starters and jump beef will take you a really long way. After that, progressing is just a matter of learning specific jump maps and fine tuning your own skills, which simply comes by you playing honestly. There's no secret to magically becoming good and practice makes perfect when it comes to TF2. So I want to cover three main things in this video, the first being when and why to bomb. Bombing is an essential part of playing soldier and it's used to create space and apply initial damage for your team to clean up on. Mostly though against lesser skilled opponents, one bomb is usually enough to cause massive damage. If you've ever watched me play, I tend to pre-fire or sink rockets when I'm trying to go in for like a planned bomb on a large number of targets because it tends to do a large amount, I know I'm saying large enough, but it tends to do a large amount of damage at once and can catch off low HP classes. Uh, usually the medic or the sniper, which is like a really good target. Most soldier bombs in TF2 actually revolve around picking off one of the three really important classes. Now in Highlander, the medic, the sniper, and the demo man, those are the three classes, are by far the most important bomb targets. Everything else is usually, usually traded for at a disadvantage for your soldier. Now the biggest mistake that I see with new players is that they believe that soldier is only meant for bombing. And such, they're gonna usually spawn, bomb the combo, maybe get a pick, maybe not, and die. Now this is a this is good sometimes, but in 90% of cases, you're better off staying alive unless the other team has a full uber advantage on you. If not, even if you kill their medic, it could leave your flank wide open for them to pick yours and gain advantage. Now on a small side note, a lot of people have been asking me what I'm actually referring to when I'm talking about the combo, the quote unquote combo. Now the combo in Highlander, is referred to the big group of power classes that tend to make up the bulk of your damage and to hold choke points. This group is usually composed of your demo, heavy, medic, sniper, and sometimes pyro, usually pyro actually. These classes should be staying together as a blob all the time. Now soldier on the other hand is part of the quote unquote flank, which is tasked with guarding other entrances and making sure that people aren't getting behind. The flank is usually composed of your soldier, scout, and depending on the map, also engineer, but and on the rare occasion, it really depends on the team and on the map, maybe sometimes pyro. This is why I mentioned that bombing the combo is usually a priority, because it contains two of the three very important Highlander classes, which are Medic and Demo. Now, Sniper is an exception, because at the highest level, Sniper has become part of the combo, but not every region and not every division has adopted this meta play yet. Now, obviously, bombing is not so easy to do, so it's important that we use an element of surprise to catch players off guard. Now, this brings me to my next point, which is explaining the right timing and opportunities for bombing. As one of two classes with explosive jumping in Highlander, you're pretty much the only guy on your team that can create openings and dive the other team to get picks. There are a lot of things that you can only learn so much from watching videos from, and this concept is certainly one of them. I can surely teach you the basics of being an effective soldier, but nothing will even come close to trying it for yourself, which is why I tend to try and teach a more fluid way of playing, rather than a sort of quote unquote, my will is absolute way of playing. I see a lot of bombs fail because they're often too predictable, or they come too far away. Now, a really good soldier bomb comes in like at a high speed, but from an unpredictable or a fairly hidden angle. Now, for example, jumping in a plain open field will usually get you denied instantly by any person with half a brain and the ability to aim, which fortunately for you is not quite as common as you think. It's just a somewhat difficult concept to comprehend in pubs because people tend to just hold about anywhere, although it's very easy and very quick to learn the common spots that medics tend to hold and how to bomb them. Now for example, a great bomb on Badwater first offense comes from the back tunnel area where the other team is likely not going to be looking. You usually get denied by a sentry though, so it's important to take that out first. Now this is where another aspect of, of teamwork comes in. It's very, 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 very unlikely for a straight up bomb to work if it's not preceded or followed up by some sort of distraction or damage. Sometimes you're the distraction actually for a spy play. This is what I want to touch on my third point, which is understanding the mentality of the other team. A really great way to improve as soldiers is to play other classes and observe how other players tend to play and find out what tends to work and what tends to fail, and then adapt in consequence. This is why I love to play combo classes like Demo, Heavy, and Medic, because I find it incredibly easy to catch out inexperienced players who think they're able to get the jump on a combo that's aware. Now, in a similar fashion, getting caught out by a really great player yourself is a great way to copy it and use it for yourself in the future. Now let's talk about some strategies and how to get into the head of the other team. 
If the other team has 100% uber and you don't, there's a good chance that they're going to be on a high alert for some sort of spy or soldier play that's going to be happening. So usually bombing at this time without a distraction will land you face to face with a pre-revved up heavy or like an annoying mini sentry or something like that. Usually for your team to maintain an advantage, you're going to need to get that force or you're going to be in big trouble. Now I found out the best way to get a successful play on the medic or demo comes from a combination of everything that we've talked about so far. So like your ability to jump. Now, as well as your understanding of their positioning it means you have to know where they are. Usually this comes from like a spy player or something. And you have to have the ability to hit fast from a relatively hidden angle while another teammate comes in and is tracks. And that's usually enough to get a drop at the highest level of play. And in fact, I've shown a few clips in this video that are from actual Platinum Highlander scrims. Now, obviously at a lower level or like in TF2 center lobbies, whatnot, or even in matchmaking actually. Now your basic knowledge of jumping should carry you enough to pull off these plates by yourself, but the real difference between an average soldier and a really good soldier is the ability to work off what your teammates give you, but also work off what the other team concedes to you in terms of ground and player advantage. Now obviously a lot of what I said is kind of abstract and you really just have to get in and play for yourself. Now with matchmaking right around the corner as I've said, there's no better time to get into competitive. And for everyone watching this, I really hope that you know you guys enjoyed the game and whatnot. And um, I hope you guys are able to take away something from, from this video, something smart maybe. And I always appreciate, you know, the feedback that I get. I always appreciate a like and whatnot. And if you guys are interested on some one-on-one -on -one learning and whatever fun educational stuff, I always host a stream that a lot of people tend to enjoy. I've had a, a very large viewer turnout recently for my competitive streams. People tend to enjoy them a lot. And um, yeah, I'll drop a link in the description if you guys are... More than welcome to come by, and uh, I think that will be it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it as always, and I'll see you guys next time.